to justify putting in like not enough, which makes no sense because it's cheap. So just put in the 5,000 like I've been saying. So guys, Derek, moreplay28s.com. Today we are going to be checking out Greg Doucette's pre-workout. Somebody posted on the subreddit, someone get Derek to break down Greg's new supplement. HTLT, presumably harder than last time subs. I didn't even know it was live, but apparently it's live um, or it's coming soon. And he has the full breakdown. So, you know, a lot of people have requested I break it down and uh, we're going to be getting into it and giving my uh, full analysis. So if you go to the website, you have the full supplement breakdown here. This is the uh, render of what the packaging is gonna look like. Even has some pretty uh, neat details around the uh, ribbing of the lids, which is pretty impressive to be honest because lids are fucking even hard to come by now in this, uh, with the you know what going on, there's shortages of really weird things that you wouldn't think would be problematic to get a hold of, like fucking lids. So having like literal goddamn screen printed lids, pretty legit to be honest. So. Anyways, getting into the supplement facts, like I couldn't help but feel like like I was impressed off the bat and because it's sort of broken down like Gorilla Mode sort of and this is, uh, you know, off the bat you can see like very, very reasonable serving sizes. You can see breakdown that looks uh, like right in line with shit I'd recommend. So like in general, I could tell like off the bat this is going to be like a pretty reasonable fucking supplement that I'm probably going to be uh, on board with, but I'll break it down line by line. But as you can see here, some of the stuff off the bat is pretty like, pretty close to like my recommendations, like as far as breaking down the L-citrulline from the malic acid, so you're not artificially inflating your claims, deceiving the customer, having a creatine monohydrate at an adequate dose. You know, how many people are going to keep saying you need just 3,000 milligrams, bro? Like, no, it depends on fucking body weight. It's not just that every single person gets away with 3,000 milligrams, the same as the next guy who weighs, you know, 50 pounds more. I don't know why people still think like this. It's like saying every single guy can get away with the same TRT dose or the same dose of whatever, or has the same vitamin intake needs is probably is a much better example. Like does, do you need the same protein intake as your little sister? No, you fucking don't. You have different demands. You have different muscle size. So why the fuck could you get the same intramuscular hyperhydration as a goddamn little girl? You know, makes no fucking sense. So anyways, let's, uh, it has two reviews. Um, we're going to look at them first, better than last time. Haven't bought the product, but with my laser eye vision, I already know this would be a good product by looking at the ingredients and dosage. Itchy bubble, <laughs> made my bum hole itch, terrified. This isn't even an emoji. It's like uh, fucking shocked plus sad, I don't know. But um, yeah, so like obviously it's trolling them right away because of the beta alanine, which obviously anyone from my channel automatically, they're gonna say beta alanine, you know, troll with the butthole itches. Which is fine because that's indeed <laughs> what it does. It does have performance enhancing elements to it, don't get me wrong, but we will break down exactly like how that would come to be and um, get into the shit. So anyways, we are, we'll start off at the top. So we have the sodium up here and a lot of people are probably gonna expect me to be like, why would you include sodium at such a fucking pitiful dosage? The reason is, is because his formula actually has city choline sodium as you see down here. So he has to list this not because he's trying to include like a shitty amount of sodium, rather because it is part of the listing requirements on the label, not because he's trying to put in a fucking like sprinkle of salt and be like, here you go, bro. So like he's not, he's not putting in like, you know, a shitty multivitamin or something like you've seen other people try and do. This is literally like part of the labeling requirements. If you look at Gorilla Mode Nitric, we do the same shit. Like if, if you see here, this is the, our product page and you look at the, uh, the label up here, if you see at the top, it is, uh, well, it's actually a computer generated version of the label. That's why this thing is not broken down looking the way it is on the bottle necessarily with the proper line breaks, but this is the sodium up here separated by the actual, you know, nutritional intake, potassium. And it's not because we're trying to include sodium and potassium. It's because we have things in here that have these as a byproduct of fucking being in there. So like, for example, with the sodium, like this is not like, I'm not trying to include sodium on its own because I'm not trying to make a salty motherfucking pre-workout. So anyways, just wanted to clarify that because I know that would be uh, that's a point that a lot of people would be wondering about off the bat is why is this up here? It is up there because it has to be. So next up, L-citrulline. We have 5,000 milligrams per one scoop, 10,000 per two. So you probably heard me talk about many times what the max efficacious dose of L-citrulline is. The most probably, you know, tried and true nitric oxide precursor that we have available in the supplement industry, or at least, you know, one of, 
Um, and it is, uh, you know, often claimed to be the efficacious dose. Oh, you know, you use six grams of citrulline malate and when it's actually a two to one ratio where you're getting 4,000 milligrams of L-citrulline. And it's like, yeah, that's like the bare fucking minimum, bare bones, you just skated by, congratulations, dosage. But if you want a maxed out formula, you would be putting in, you know, the 10,000 milligram dose, which is, you know, why, you know, I always hype the fuck out of it in my product and presumably, um, Greg is on the same page with wanting to be as maxed out as possible, going fucking harder than last time. So anyways, and then he's broken it down with malic acid separately, just like we do. So this is, um, you know, it may have some performance enhancing elements to it, which is the only reason I've included it separately, you know, potentially some buffering of lactic acid. Maybe it has like some people claim, oh, citrulline malate, it's better than L-citrulline malate, you know, on its own. So like literally to shut up people, that is the only reason I put it in my formula is, okay, if you think citrulline malate is better, then not only will I put in the max dose of L-citrulline, but I will put in a max dose of what otherwise would be the same amount of malic acid if I was using the two to one ratio of citrulline to malic acid, or at least, you know, close to that. So I'm like, when you're looking at this, you're technically looking at what would otherwise be 13,000 milligrams of citrulline malate, even though there's no such thing as real citrulline malate because it's not chemically bonded. In fact, it is mixed in a vat. So anyone who claims citrulline malate on their label is essentially mislabeling the product. And this is why he has listed it separately, presumably just like we do. And um, I don't know, maybe he has a different explanation for why he put in the malic acid, but I literally put it in there to like shut people up who might try and claim that my L-citrulline on its own in 10,000 milligrams is not as good as, you know, citrulline malate, you know, fucking together. So maybe it has some shit with lactic acid, but to be honest, it's mostly in there because I don't want any holes in my formula. So that is why I put it in there. I don't know if that's his justification, but that was mine. So creatine monohydrate, 5,000 milligrams. If you saw my video on how much creatine do you actually need, is it 5,000 milligrams? I forget what the title was. Editor, please put the uh, card in the corner. How much creatine do you actually need? I made it recently. And I talk about the 3,000 milligram purported dose that is supposed to be, you know, it's fine. It's, you know, it's, it's enough. Like, just fuck off and take it. And that most companies will tell you to justify putting in, like, not enough, which makes no fucking sense because it's cheap. So just put in the 5,000, like I've been saying. So that is what Greg did as well. For me, it's like, why would you not? You know, it's cheap. It's the most effective goddamn supplement ingredient there is. Put it in there at the maximum dose that is, you know, would broad spectrum be applicable to pretty much everyone. So no kidney stress at this dose. It's safe, it's effective as fuck. You're going to be hitting the requirements of even the bigger guys who have higher requirements, who have more exercise output and whatnot, and have more nutrient demands and whatnot. So why not just put in the full amount? So anyways, 5,000 milligrams. Not only does it act as a way to um, volumize the muscle, you know, it has uh, very potent effects in like so many different things downstream and relieving methylation demands in terms of neurological function, fertility, even um, fucking myostatin inhibition. Like there's so much stuff that people don't realize creatine does. It is a very, very effective supplement that everyone should be using unless you're scared of hair loss, in which case I understand the skepticism and worry about it. And, um, and I did a video, you know, on the hair loss component of creatine before you can check that out if you're interested. But um, like in, if you're gonna look for natty stuff that's going to work, creatine is at the top of the list and you want to be getting as much of it as you can be use, actually utilizing ideally. So 5,000 milligrams gets my stamp of approval. Beta alanine, 2,000 milligram per scoop, 4,000 milligrams. Like for all intents and purposes, like to be honest, when we're looking at these formulas, you might as well like factor in like this is, anytime we talk about our formulas, if you're a two versus a one scoop, like this is the full, the full formula is like the two scoop one is what we're looking at. So like, you know, for all intents and purposes, 4,000 milligrams of beta alanine, you know, is that an efficacious dose? Yeah, it is. But that is under the assumption that you're gonna be using it on a daily basis, which to be honest, it's not like you couldn't. It's not like he has such a ridiculous stim bomb in here that you wouldn't be able to take it every day. Like we have caffeine in here and theobromine. It's not like he has some exotic stimulants that are going to prevent you from taking this on a daily basis or, you know, make it necessarily like a fucking, I don't know, like, like if you have a uh, very exotic driven pre-workout that has, you know, isopropyl norsinephrine or olsine, like a bunch of shit in there that's going to be stacked on top of the caffeine, you could put yourself in a position where using it on an everyday basis perpetually around the clock just to get your, you know, your beta alanine in and your creatine, you know, it can be a bit, a bit problematic. But for him, it looks like he's designed it in a way where the stimulants are not so excessive whereby it's much worse than somebody who's having like, you know, 
a few, you know, multiple cups of coffee a day, like how many people are already doing that? Like quite a few. So above and beyond that, it's not like there's a whole lot that's going to be like debilitating in a neurological aspect if you use this on a daily basis. And yeah, like, you know, presumably this is like a long-term sustainable, like daily driver pre-workout that you could otherwise use. And frankly, even if you were to not use two scoops and you were gonna go lower on the stimulant intake, you could still get a decent amount of beta alanine up to build up to your saturation point. It's not like you need to take 4,000 a day. You just need to, accumulatively, you need to get up to 179,000 milligrams, which can take you a fucking while when you're dealing with pre-workouts that you have to take on a daily basis, but you could eventually get there. And at that point, you'll be yielding the, like, to be honest, it's not that significant. It's like a few percent increase in like endurance output ascent, and it's not really like acute performance outcomes in like a weightlifting context necessarily. It's more of an endurance compound, but obviously useful nonetheless. And it is, you know, something that actually fucking works, whereas there's not a whole lot of ingredients that literally like blatantly work in the clinical data to a point where it's like, you know, if, if you built up to the saturation point, like this will make a marked difference in your performance and this, you know, metric right here, like there's not a whole lot of like, like muscle building shit that actually works. And this is one of the ingredients that is, it's like tried and true, the paresthesia component of it, I fucking hate though, the itchy face, the itchy butthole, the itchy foot that you can't scratch in the gym, like that kind of shit, I can't stand it, dude for the effect that you have to like take it for fucking weeks on end every single day. That is why I don't include it. That's why I hate it. And like the performance outcome you get from it is very negligible in my opinion to the point that I just like feel that it's, you know, can ruin a pre-workout. Like why risk, you know, I just don't like risking that, oh, does this person like the fucking face tingles? So obviously Greg likes it or else he wouldn't put it in there. And again, that's personal preference. If you like the shit, some people like to just feel something and that's fine. If they want to do that, why not? You know, it's all personal preference. And obviously some of this stuff is like his own personal spin on what he thinks is the optimal pre-workout. And like, obviously, um, like he must really enjoy it because like, there's no other reason you don't put in 4,000 milligrams. So like, I guess hypothetically you could, you could justify the performance increases. The ROI is definitely worth the paresthesia all those days leading up to the performance. Like, I just don't see the ROI personally, but that's me. And you know, some people actually do like it. A lot of people actually like it. So again, it is an efficacious dose and the stimulant component, like I said, is reasonable enough that you could hypothetically be using this like sustainably as a daily driver where you could reach your saturation point. But yeah, you know, like again, this is, it's basically just gonna be like some, me giving my personal opinion at the end of the day. It's, a, it's the itchy butthole ingredient that I fucking hate what is in there. So betaine broken down into a nitrate bound form of it, as well as an anhydrous form. So one is going to yield a, well, we have 2000 milligrams here. So we're going to be yielding about, um, if I recall correctly, it is like 346 milligrams of betaine nitrate, like the nitrate component, the molecular weight relative to like a gram of actual betaine nitrate. I think the nitrate component is like 346 milligrams. So that would be like almost 700 that you would be getting of nitrates out of this like full daily dose, which is, you know, significant and, you know, going to help with that nitric oxide production. And as well as the betaine anhydrous, cumulatively, the two betaine formats are going to increase um, intracellular hyperhydration, act as an osmolite, as well as relieve methylation demands and whatnot too, because it does have multifaceted purposes in the body. And I use this on a daily basis. Even if I wasn't using my pre-workout every day, you know, I will typically either be using mode on a workout or, you know, nitric if I'm training late. Um, honestly, I like fucking combine them anyways, but if I'm training late, I'll just use nitric. But if I'm training, you know, earlier, I will use mode plus nitric, like one scoop of each. But I would be using betaine separately, even if I wasn't using pre-workout. So like for me, it is a very good like health supplement too for some people, like for me, I'm homozygous C77T for MTHFR, which I'm not gonna break down the genetic polymorphisms again, which I have you know a few times if you wanna go see my breakdown of you know gorilla mode and the reason why I include betaine and some of the you know scientific insight behind why this is good in a health context, not just a performance out, you know, outcome context. You can check that out, but there are a lot of people who have impaired methylation um, in their body to a point where using things like betaine, like creatine, can help really relieve their system and help, you know, make physiologic functions work properly that otherwise aren't. So for me, I use that as a daily compound anyways, and these dosages cumulatively together are definitely efficacious. Um, yeah, L-tyrosine, 500 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams in the full dose. 
Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, that's going to work. <laughs> it's like it's a neurotransmitter precursor. It you know helps with mood regulation. It uh, gives a good sense of well-being. Can be a little bit uplifting. It's like non-stimulant, stimulating. So it is a good ingredient, in my opinion. That's why I include it in my formulas. And it's uh, this is a dose that is going to produce a marked difference. It's not like a high dose necessarily, but it's enough to cumulatively with all the other shit is going to be like reasonable enough to produce like the effect it is seeking. Rhodiolo, rhodiola, rhodiola rose, rhodiola rosea. So 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams. So objectively for this ingredient, it's kind of, you know, a little bit of an interesting one because it's not what you would traditionally think of in a pre-workout. You would think of almost this as like a stress relieving compound, but I can see where like the justification might come in to be like, okay, this um, might be able to improve stress resilience, reduce fatigue. As far as the dosage, um, 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams in the full dose. Um, as far as I know, I believe it's like in an acute context, the higher dosages seem to work better, but in like a cumulative long-term context, dosages like 50 to 100 milligrams will you know, still produce a marked difference. And presumably like the idea of this product is to be a daily driver or else he would not be including beta alanine in there. And you know, the justification for the low dose rhodiola presumably is going to be the same thing. So you're getting cumulative like buildup of these ingredients over time. And despite the fact that the dosage like objectively on a sliding scale of rhodiola is not like high, down the line of using it on like a you know nearly daily basis, it will build up to a point where it does have a marked difference on stress resilience, anti-fatigue, anti-fatigue, et cetera, where it may be beneficial in a performance context in the gym and helping you to um, not break down as easily, essentially, more so like mentally than anything. Um, theobromine, 100 milligrams and 200 milligrams. So this is something that is found in chocolate. It's often thought to have like overlapping effects with caffeine or potentially like alter the pharmacokinetic profile of caffeine to some extent. Um, that's sort of unclear. They haven't really elucidated that in the literature. And even when they do clinical studies on it, they're not really sure how it's working when it's used concurrently with caffeine, um, at least from what I recall. But the dosage used um, is kind of interesting and it's paradoxical in that the higher you go, the higher your heart rate will get, but the effects are like, there's definitely like a uh, point where shit definitely goes south a lot faster than with caffeine. So like caffeine, like in general, if you push the dosage from 175 to 350, like you're going to be getting significantly more stimulating effects. It's going to be more um, you know, potentially euphoric, mood elevating, um, stimulating, obviously more energy, like by a fucking notable amount. Theobromine is less like stimulating and more like mood uplifting slash sense of well-being inducing. It can be mildly stimulating, but it's not really like the same as caffeine. It's kind of hard to put into words. And sometimes these compounds, it's like, it's hard to really say like exactly what to expect without you feeling it yourself. So sometimes it's easier to just be like, go buy theobromine capsules and fucking take it and decide if you like it. than me try to explain what, like what, how it compares to caffeine. But the point is, is the dosage, you like, you'll often find like 300, 500 milligram caps on Amazon. And um, that's, you know, often thought to be like the efficacious dose. When you look at the studies, there's actually an interesting, like paradoxical, like reversal effect where you get like decreased well-being at higher dosages and it seems to work like better at certain lower dosages. I'm not like, to be honest, it's not one of my favorite, you know, stimulants at all. So I don't really use it myself, but the lower dosages, like this format cumulatively when combined with caffeine, like if you had a higher dose in here, I think it would be too overwhelming. So like the dosage sort of makes sense when it's used concurrently, like with objectively a pretty fat dose of caffeine. So for me, like this makes sense and anything more than that, you know, might've been, might have been overkill. You know, it's hard to say for certain. I'm not the most familiar with the ingredient because to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of it, but use concurrently with it. I think this is a reasonable dose that will have a like, you know, potentially a one plus one equals three effect when it comes to like mood elevation, etc. cetera. City Choline, so this is his uh, choline donor he's using in the product. This is the, you know, the root of the sodium at the top, like I mentioned. Now, what do I think of city choline? Um, personally, I've made pretty clear in the past that I'm, you know, much bigger fan of alpha GPC. Um, alpha glycerol phosphoryl choline is 50% choline by weight, whereas city choline is like 18% or something like that, which is, you know, obviously yielding by molecular weight a much lower amount of choline, which is like the main reason why you'd be wanting you'd be using it. Now, again, 
there's a byproduct of city cooling that may have other satellite interactions neurologically, but personally, I'm trying to get the max amount of choline out of the product and get it across the blood-brain barrier. So for me, I prefer alpha glycerol phosphorylcholine. That's why I use it in my nootropics and whatnot. Uh, but city choline is like, like it's way fucking better than choline butartrate. Like just put it that way. So for this, like this is, you know, some people like choline, like the fucking city choline, you know, it doesn't not work. It's just not my preferable source of a choline donor. Like, um, and when you're coupling it with an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, like who pairs DNA, you can get it, you know, again, a one plus one, like honestly with these two, you're getting like a one plus one equals like five effect. Well, maybe not that. like one plus one equals three. Maybe that's a better example. But anyway, it's like, you don't necessarily need like a fat dose when you're using other vectors to kind of leverage the acetylcholine pathway in a way that isn't just a result of choline dosage. It's also concurrently with acetylcholinesterase inhibition. So for this, Huperzine A, he has 50 micrograms when you actually break down the 1% Huperzine A content of the actual extract here. So 50 micrograms per scoop, 100 micrograms per two scoops. So 100 micrograms, is that useful? Um, yeah, and that is a pretty fucking safe dose. Like when you look at um, this using concurrently with the city choline with everything else in the formula, you know, it's reasonable enough to produce an effect. Um, personally, I go higher just because I'm like really like to leverage that pathway hard. And in the Alzheimer's data, you know, they definitely push the envelope when it comes to the dosages upwards of 400 micrograms every uh, twice a day. Um, doesn't mean you need to use that much though to produce an effect. And obviously this is largely going to come down to personal preference with what you feel is most effective because some people you use, you know, you know, for example, 350 milligrams caffeine, even for some people is a bit too much. So this is all personal preference at the end of the day. And this is why pre-workouts, it's not always a one size fits all thing where it's like one pre-workout equals the best thing for everyone, especially when it comes to tolerance to things like choline, acetylcholinesterase inhibition. These things, some people can't even tolerate like a really fucking high dose of cholinergics to a point that it can actually be problematic for them. And they might be better off with something that's, you know, much lower dosed doesn't necessarily mean one is, you know, like on paper, one is like more potent, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's always better for every individual. So overall, this formula is very, very good in my opinion. Um, there's not really any holes in it. It is just an, a per personal preference of what you feel is most valuable to put in at this point. Like it's not like any of the dosages are like fucking terrible or anything. Everything is like pretty maxed out to a point where it's, you know, he could still make a profit on it without fucking losing money because at the end of the day, this stuff is really expensive to make. Like putting in 10,000 milligrams of L-citrulline, putting in the full maxed out dosages of these ingredients, like the margins start to dwindle to a point where you might, it becomes hard when you factor in how much you're paying people, paying for your fucking warehouse, paying for the products, paying for fucking labels, paying for like goddamn the credit card processing, Shopify fees, Everything at the end of the day eats into your margin. Marketing, Facebook ads, athletes, all this shit eats into it to a point where to even net out a profit, you have to be cognizant too of, well, why don't you just put in like the fucking max amount of like every single ingredient fucking ever and just have a tub this big? Like <laughs> there has to be a line where the, the company st can still profit to actually reinvest and like make like new skews of flavors and shit too. So again, this is just my way of explaining. There's not any holes in it. This is just a personal preference thing in terms of ingredients. Like for me personally, like I would way rather see something else instead of a beta alanine. And this is like where our formulas, you know, obviously differ, you know, same thing with some of these, you know, the cholinergics, I push them far more aggressively than he does. Like the rhodiola, I would probably use something else. And you know, this is like, basically the only shit like we really differ on. So this is why I'm breaking it down, but everything is great, dude. Like this is a great formula and uh, definitely gets my stamp of approval. And um, it's very rare you see these dosages being put out. So definitely a solid pre-workout. And I imagine uh, most people that get it are going to be quite happy with it. And uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, not bitch you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mind nootropics, as well as Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, my HRT clinic, uh, my recommended diet model, and anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.